Hello everyone, welcome to Frontier Hotspots, it is a channel focusing on the most cutting-edge technology and engineering in China and the world. The rocket with the largest low-orbit launch capability in China, the Long March 5B, has once again created brilliance, sending the Wenti an experimental module of the Chinese space station weighing more than 23 tons, including 1.55 tons of propellant, into orbit, creating China's low-orbit launch weight and monomer spacecraft weight records. The launch of the Sky Capsule marked the climax of the construction of the Chinese space station. In the next three months, we will witness the highest rate of modular space station construction in human history. It took only one and a half years from the launch of the core module to the completion of the space station. After the capsule enters orbit, the huge solar panels at its end will be partially unfolded. This 23-meter-long triple-junction gallium arsenide flexible solar panel is the largest spacecraft solar panel developed by China so far. 13 hours after launch, Wenian will dock with the forward docking port of the Tianhe core module of the space station. This will be the first docking of the Chinese space station in a manned state, and it will also be the fastest module rendezvous process in the history of space station construction. If all goes well, the Shenzhou 14 crew will carry out the most challenging mission in the history of China's manned spaceflight. The space station will make complex three turns, adjust the sky capsule to the vertical ground position, and expand the solar panel twice, forming a giant solar wing with a wingspan of more than 55 meters, second only to the International Space Station. The astronaut will operate the special indexing mechanical arm, inversion mechanism, to grasp the sky question module. After the sky questioning and sky he core modules are released from the docking lock, they will rotate the sky questioning module by turning up, rotating and turning down. 90 degrees, and then redocking to the lateral berthing interface of the core cabin to complete the assembly work. Finally, the space station will make three more turns to return to its normal flight attitude. Three months later, another 20-ton Mengtian experimental module will also be launched into the sky. Astronauts will repeat the above series of operations. We will see the emergence of a 70-ton modular space station within the year. The repositioning and redocking of the sky capsule is China's first on-orbit assembly practice of large-scale space structures in space. Due to the limited launch capacity of launch vehicles, super-heavy and super-large spacecraft can only be realized by on-orbit assembly technology. Before the Chinese space station, only the former Soviet Union, Russia, and the United States, Canada, had completed such a mission. China is about to become the third country in the world with the ability to assemble super-large spacecraft in orbit. In 1986, the core module of the former Soviet Mir space station was launched into space. From 1987 to 1996, the Soviet Union successively launched six modules, including Quantum, Quantum 2, Crystal, Spectrum, Docking Module, and Natural, and connected to the Mir core module. Four of them were redocked to the sides of the core compartment using the aforementioned indexing method. The Soviet Union built the world's first modular space station with a total weight of 130 tons in 10 years. In 1998, the Russian Proton rocket put the Dawn module of the International Space Station into orbit, kicking off its 12-year construction process. By 2010, with the concerted efforts of 15 countries, it was finally completed with 15 pressurized cabin sections, a 94-meter-long truss, four pairs of battery panels with a wingspan of 73 meters, as well as external components such as heat dissipation radiator panels and robotic arms. A large space station from 2011 to 2021, the International Space Station has added three expansion modules, including the Bigelow Inflatable Cabin, the Bishop Airlock Cabin, and the Science Experiment Cabin, and replaced the Pyrnode Cabin, making it the largest, 109 by 73 meters, and the heaviest, 420 tons, combined spacecraft. In the more than 60 years since human beings entered the space age, apart from the above three space stations, there has been no case of in-orbit assembly and construction of large spacecraft. The on-orbit assembly technology of small and medium-sized spacecraft has been explored for decades, and so far there is no practical precedent. On-orbit assembly is carried out in the harsh environment of space, and the spacecraft system needs to be continuously reconfigured during the construction process. 
The overall and subsystem design of the modular spacecraft needs to comprehensively consider many factors. Construction and testing of modular modules or components, ground simulation, launch and docking, on-orbit assembly and system reconfiguration require the support of various technical capabilities such as heavy rockets, docking mechanisms, space robotic arms, and extravehicular activities. On-orbit assembly has proven to be no easy task. Only a few aerospace powers can do it. The two experimental modules of the Chinese space station adopt the assembly method of axial docking and robotic arm indexing pioneered by Mir. In order to reduce the mutual occlusion of the battery panels, the Chinese space station also plans to shift the two battery panels of the Tianhe core module to the end of the two experimental modules and realize the reconstruction of the power supply system at an appropriate time. The displacement distance far exceeds the experimental module. Indexing operations will be more challenging. This makes the construction difficulty and technical requirements of the Chinese space station exceed that of the Mir. More complex operations have been implemented in the construction of the International Space Station, such as the use of robotic arms to hoist large sections from the space shuttle cargo bay and install them to the space station, splicing and installation of trusses, and displacement and redeployment of large battery panels. Due to the large number of modules and the great differences in the design of the US and Russia modules, the interface and dynamic reconfiguration between the modules and subsystems of the space station have also become quite complicated. But realistically speaking, the complexity of the International Space Station is largely the result of the different design concepts and two different standards of the United States and Russia, rather than a manifestation of its advanced nature. The simpler construction procedure of the Chinese space station is not only the result of its small size, but also the result of an optimized design that draws on lessons learned from previous space stations. The Chinese space station's space robotic arm, a key facility for on-orbit assembly, is not inferior to the Canada Arm 2 of the International Space Station, and also has the function of crawling outside the space station for long distances. It is fully capable of the complex operations performed by the International Space Station as well as a variety of future missions that may not yet be imagined. The in-orbit construction of spacecraft is the goal that mankind has long dreamed of and pursued. It is not only the only means to build super-large spacecraft, but also an important technology for in-situ utilization of space resources in the future. On-orbit construction is divided into three levels on-orbit assembly of large spacecraft, on-orbit assembly of single spacecraft, and component-level space manufacturing. The orbital assembly of the space station that has been realized so far belongs to the first level. The latter two levels are still in the exploratory stage. The multiple on-orbit maintenance of the Hubble Space Telescope has achieved the replacement and upgrade of spacecraft components, which has actually laid the foundation for the on-orbit assembly of a single spacecraft. The 3D printing experiments carried out on China's new generation manned spacecraft test ship and the International Space Station are a successful exploration of component-level space manufacturing. In-orbit construction of spacecraft is still in its infancy. As the scale of human exploration of space expands, it will become more and more important, and the future development space is huge. It will also become an important area for major spacefaring nations to compete fiercely. Large-scale spacecraft and ground infrastructure have a lot in common. China is known as the infrastructure madman, and it should become an area where my country can exert its advantages. China's aerospace industry has long lagged behind the Soviet Union and the United States and other aerospace pioneering countries. After decades of accumulation, especially the unremitting efforts since the beginning of the new century, it has finally come from behind and entered the ranks of the first camp. The launch, docking and installation of Wentian marks that China has mastered the technology of in-orbit construction of large spacecraft, which is a milestone. This may be the first step for China to become a space infrastructure maniac. According to the plan, after the completion of the first phase of construction of the Chinese space station, more expansion modules will be launched, and the on-orbit construction technology will be further mature. In general, as long as China can make breakthroughs in scale, it has a better chance of winning. It is not a dream to reproduce the infrastructure maniac in space.